All right, guys, let's go over this little um, Emerald Guide Remexis case. So we're going to go through the scanning and the smile design and merging with CBCT data and then ultimately printing of the surgical guide. So first, let's start with scanning. One thing that's nice is the and the Emerald scanner um, with the full arch scanning is, is pretty simple once you get the kind of the workflow around and, and learn how to do full arch scanning. It's, it's pretty routine. Anybody could do it. Um, and so in this instance, um, we're scanning here. We're going to track across the palette, not because I really need to, um, but just because I want to. And that's kind of kind of what this scanner is. It's fun to it's fun to use and fun to scan stuff with. So really, really awesome here. Good palette tracking. Um, we're just going to speed up for time's sake because, you know, nobody has a lot of time to, to watch scanning and things like that. Although full arches are around uh, a minute to two minutes, depending on um, the case and, and who's scanning and how much experience they have. Although I'm, I'm sure when you're first learning, you could, you could spend more time than that. And so here we have the final rendered model, which is good for this purposes of uh, this missing tooth number nine. And we're going to scan the opposing that's over the missing space and go ahead and, and now you do not do a zigzag pattern on your bite. Um, you scan one arch at a time and allow it to snap into place. So here we're freehanding this wax up um, for this tooth and in, you know using the plan tab and the various tools in plan cat easy which um, is pretty simple. And one thing that you'll notice is that it looks like the tooth is a little bit bigger of a space than tooth number eight. And so what I'm going to do is just I'm probably going to throw this into smile design to show the patient that the final aesthetic result might be a um, little less than ideal. It's really critical that you get your CEJ right where you want it because that's what your measurements are going to be used from uh, when you plan it in the cone beam software, you're going to use that CEJ for your three tool rule. And you're going to have that be a huge factor in your definitive placement. So here I'm just throwing it in the smile design. I'm using the clone feature. And when you clone that tooth, you see that you have like a half a millimeter diastema there. And so now I'm just gonna clone or mirror that little, little area right there to show the patient that it, you know, it might be a little bit wider. And then I could also show it to her in her smile and everything like that. I'm just gonna bring that over into the design software to verify that it is indeed um, gonna be about a half a millimeter wider than, than what I would like and the, whether or not the patient wants to redo number eight or just do the single tooth. In this instance, uh, she didn't seem too concerned, so we're okay with that. And so now what you're going to do after you um, design the tooth, you're going to load the DICOM data for the patient. And you can see here we are going to now merge the scan that we just took with the DICOM data. And you go up to fit model icon and you're going to select from your from your emerald scan. Now if you didn't have an emerald scanner, you could have any STL here from any system. And you start by clicking three common data points spread out um, a good bit, and then it's going to do a best fit rendering. And then from there, you could go ahead and select additional data points to further customize the fit and alignment of the models. And then when you hit accept, it's going to then also do more mathematical calculations to make it even more accurate. And so what you could see here is when you do in your um, XYZ cross cuts, that you're going to have a very precise model alignment to the DICOM data because everything's going to be based off of this so you want to make sure that your alignment is indeed perfect and really triple check it in these various cross-sectional planes you just have to you can't be too fast here you want to make sure that this is this is accurate and it, it's remarkably accurate so now we're going to bring in that little number nine that we designed on plan cat easy and it's going to throw it in right where you designed it right there so no worries now we have all the information that we really need to plan this case from a from an angulation location and depth standpoint and 
with Romexis, you have like a bajillion different options for fully guided implant cases, especially now with the Steco sleeve integration. So here I'm going to do a dense ply Osteo Speed EV 4.2 by 11, and I'm going to use a Steco sleeve for the fully guided workflow. And I'm just throwing this implant in and trying to get it in place, and then I'm going to fine tune it based on the 3-2 rule, which is 3 millimeters um, apical to the CEJ and 2 millimeters palatal. And you can see here that um, you have the implant centric view that you're able to rotate through and get the various angles. Notice that the sleeve is just hanging out there, not ready for manipulation of the sleeve yet. Once I have my implant placed, I'll get to that. I'm just fine tuning the, the three millimeters apical, apical to the CEJ right there and then two millimeters palatal to the CEJ, which is why that CEJ location in your design is critical. You don't wanna rush that. And, and now we could see that I have everything kind of the way that I want it into that space. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, design the guide. I fine tune the sleeve parameters based on my surgical guilt drill kit. And now I'm removing material from the guide, placing some holes for verification of seating. And then I'm going to probably stamp it with, and you could use the patient's name, export that STL, and then import it for 3D printing into um, any various uh, system. So here we are, um, Dr. Evans, on the surgery. It took him about five minutes to do the whole surgery, uh, literal real time. You know, it's, it's flapless, it's easy for the patient. Um, she had a, no discomfort at all. We had uh, good torque values. So yeah, that's just the simple workflow, guys. I can't wait to see all y'all's cases and all the cool stuff that you do with it.